Today we're going to make a 3D isometric cube. I'm going to show you a, a really easy way to do it and it might help you with some other um, projects you might want to work on or to creating 3D effects in general. Um, it's a very simple process. So what you want to do is going to open a new artboard. I've already got one open. If you don't know how to do it, you just go to the artboard tool and just make an artboard. Next thing we want because I'm going to go with isometric, um, we want a isometric grid. So you want to go to uh, show grid and you'll see it's not isometric. So you want to go to grid and axis and you want to go to the preset isometric. Now here I've got 10 millimeter squares, that's fine. Just make sure that that is 10 millimeters. It'll just make it a bit easier. So the next thing is we're going to create a polygon and you'll see that the default polygon actually has five sides. So you just need to make that six and you want to make it, I think around about 80 millimeters by 80 millimeters to start with. That should line up with this grid just nicely. So you can see it just doesn't line up. So you might want to make it 81. We'll see how that looks. You just want to, it's, it's not essential, but you just want it to be easier when you do the next part. Now I've still got a gradient in here, so I'm actually going to get rid of that. I'm just going to make it plain gray. I'll go with like a, a mid-tone. Okay. So in your layers, you've just got your single polygon. Now we're going to make the, the sides. Now in the past I have made, I've used like a, another shape and I've say made a square and then I've made it a polygon like this and that can be fine. But uh, you can also then turn that into a curve and put it into the corners and use the grid and kind of rely on the grid to help you line it up. That's fine. It is a little bit of mucking around and I think this is a better way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make three copies of this cube. So I'm just going to hold down control and just line it up. You can see it lines up to the side there. I'll go back to the original, make another one for the top. Some of you have probably already worked out what I'm going to do. And then I'll make another one for the side. So now we've got four cubes or four four polygons. They're not cubes just yet. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually change the color or the tone of each one. Just for argument's sake, I will make one dark, one medium and one light. I might just make that a little bit lighter for effect. Okay, so now you can see we've actually hidden the, the one underneath. So what I'm going to do is get the three and embed them inside the or nest them inside the polygon and now you can see we've got ourselves a a 3d cube um, now the next thing is say you want it to be a bit softer or you want it, you might need to make some adjustments of course um, so you'll have to play around with that get it to line up like that there we go so you can have fun just doing that until you get it the way you want it. The way I would do it, um, I've been working on a logo design and I just wanted a cube that I could make a bit softer. So there's a lot of options here with what you can do. So I'm going to select the polygons that are inside the cube and I'm going to add an effect to it. So I want to soften them. So I'm just going to use the Gaussian blur and just soften it a little bit like that. Okay, so that's another thing you can do. If you want some highlights, you can add a, a node, like a, a line that may be a bit like that. And that's, uh, I've actually got a, a pressure curve on there, but you can make that whatever you want. I think I'll do that just because that might help with the next step. So then I'll blur that as well. Create a bit of a 3D effect. Um, you can round the edges a little bit on the original 
curve. So you can actually just bloat it out or you can make it skinny. And this is where using these cubes really helps as a, uh, using the other polygons, I should say, really helps because if you line it up manually, it will um, not allow you really much flexibility. You'll end up with pieces um, not covering everywhere and you'll have to go back in and manually put them in. Um, I might make a, uh, a shadow. So I'll probably just use a rectangle for this and I'll just fill it a dark color. It seems to be inside the layer, so I'll just make sure it's outside for now. There we go. And I might just turn that into a into a set of nodes and just make a little make a little shadow. I might have it go over here as well. You can work out your perspectives and things if you want. Just make sure that's at the back. Now you can actually put that you can actually get all this stuff and put it in as a group. And so where have I got the, so this one's managed to go all the way down the bottom. I just want to put it in here as a group. So it's part of this. So I want to grab these two. So I just held down shift, then right click and group them or control G of course. So now I've got a group, I can do something cool. I can actually, create a ready to go symbol out of out of it so I can maybe I want a, a repeating bunch of cubes actually I'll make that shadow make that shadow blurry like that so I want to make that into a symbol now that's easy I can once I've got the everything in a group I can then create the symbol and you can see there the symbol is in this little library and I have others. So I'll show you um, one of the others. So there's another one that I've made. And the interesting part about making symbols is if I change, you can, you can untether things, but if you change the color of one, it will affect both. Or if you have a hundred, it will still affect all of them. So even, even the, original now to say I don't want this one to be part of the part of the um, symbol I want it to be its own color then I believe you go detach and that will actually change it I think you can pull it out of the symbol folder and then you've got yourself your own variant yeah so you can change it yourself there's a few limitations I'm still working out like um, changing the size uh, it would be nice to be able to change the size and you can line things up by holding shift of course you can make a copy by pressing control so using your your grid you can you know make a little city or something like that or you know blocks or a 3d logo or something it's a not a very nice color I'll just change that to a purple again <laughs> um, so I'll just change that back to something like that. So there are just a few things you can do and there's lots of other things you can do. So this is one I was playing with now, just, just now, where I made the front layers, but then I made some back layers as well and I made the front layers transparent and then embedded them all in the, in the actual same polygon. So you can see there's, that's 36%, so you can see it's actually mixing the colors. Um, you know, that's something I might play around with a bit more. Uh, I might make, I might actually add a, a little corner piece to it as well and make that a Gaussian blur as well. So there's tons of things you can do with that simple, simple idea of embedding existing shapes it takes a lot of the measuring and everything out. It takes just a lot of the double handling out of your um, out of your process, which you know it's fun. But once you get into doing something a bit more substantial, you don't want to waste your time constantly realigning things. So for me, that's been really helpful. Um, yeah, I hope this helps, and uh, please give me a follow. I haven't posted many videos lately, but give me a follow, and if you can like the video that'd be awesome um, if you have any questions 
let me know and I'll do my best to provide you with a meaningful answer. I will do some more videos on 3D shapes and things if you like. I've done a little bit of it, so let me know if you are interested in seeing more of that as well. Thank you very much.